No, Drifter went to this me and Jim fell and I don't know. Did you make that I'm just kidding. Uh, Jim? Uh, Jim? Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I heard pumpkin, I was like, <laughs> that's me. Yeah. Dumped his bike and he's on it. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their coffee and food. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Bobby to finish telling the story. That's all I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Get over here. Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we praise you. Lord, as we open your word tonight, I pray that you would teach us some new things. Lord, I pray, especially for Jim while he's in the ER tonight, Lord, may you heal his body. And I just pray that it would not be broken. Lord, we pray for Drifter for his healing as well, Lord. We pray for Dennis Kiernan. Lord, and his family as he mourns this tragedy in his life of the passing of his son. And I just pray, Lord, that you would work everything out to your glory and honor, for we know that's what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So, right. somebody tell me without questions about the book of Hebrew. Tell me a, a few things about it. Hebrew is a language. <laughs> Hebrew is the language, that's correct. It's the people. People, people of the, of the Passover. It's the people of the Passover. What's that? 60 to 70 AD. Yeah, between 60 and 70 AD. Good job. Written, by Paul, written, by, uh, Paul. written by Paul to Timothy. Probably written by Paul. Written by Paul to Timothy. Oh, thank you. Written by Paul. Paul. Yes, absolutely. What else? Uh, <laughs> we, does it ever say that it was written by Paul? No. No. No, how do we know this? So just the way it's Timothy. written. He referenced Timothy, that's right. As what a brother. Else? Yeah. Uh, as a brother. As a brother. Mm -hmm. The theology. The theology that's taught. The way it's written. Lines up with Paul. Or Paulie, as we like to say. Paulie. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, what was one of the key points of theology that points to Paul? Anybody remember? You're saved by grace. Uh, very close. You said that the last time. So, <laughs> uh, not of work. Salvation, not salvation, of work, but salvation. Remember that? Yes. Yep. Right. So salvation by faith alone. Nothing else. That's that's completely contradictory to what they were doing. It's contradictory to a lot of things. You know, because we hear it even in some churches today. You need to do you need to believe in Jesus and right? You need to believe in Jesus and do this. You need to believe in Jesus and do that. No, no, no. You need to believe in Jesus. Amen. Salvation by faith alone. All right. Um, we already talked about that. Good. What was the context of the letter? Uh, context? They were trying to get them to leave the law of Moses and realize that Jesus had basically done away with that. That's right. And But that was an easy task, right? Uh -huh. No. <clears throat> what do you mean no? It's not easy to get Jewish people to give up their faith and follow something completely new? No. no. Oh, that's interesting. Um, this was a letter written to the Hebrew people. Um, does anybody remember where they were living? No. <laughs> Turkey. No. Turkey. Greece. In northern Israel. Okay. Uh, and that's where the northern Semitic people were from. That's how we know that. Okay. Um, we already talked about that. All right. So when we've been going through this, tell me some of the the things that uh, Paul's been teaching us. Humility. Humility. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why that one. Melchizedek. <laughs> Now, kiss that. That's going to come up again tonight. So it's a good thing that we did some history on that. Okay? What else? Idols are bad. Idols are bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I want you to remember this. I'm going to say the preeminence of Christ. What does preeminence mean? Before, before, 
before death. Before everything else. Right. The importance of Jesus in the church. This letter is geared mostly to teaching people about Jesus and who he is. And if you remember uh, chapter 6, he literally said, I don't want to keep teaching the same stuff over and over, right? right. I want to stop teaching the basics because you should be to the point where you're teaching other people, right? And, and he talked about, um, in, in our last uh, chapter, about people that um, had turned away from God that were once enlightened. You guys remember that? What did we learn about that? You know. You we know this was hard, so yeah. nobody wants to talk. No, what did we you say, Lizzie? What did we knew, learn? If you knew God and you knew Jesus was Lord and then you turned away from him, what would happen to you? Huh. So. Is that what we learned? See, because, because that's exactly what people think is written in there. But remember, we dissected it, and we, we went back to what it said about the field and the thorns and the thistles, the example. So it looks as if you can know Jesus, right, and you can turn away from him, which is what Missy just said. But what did we learn about this scripture? <laughs> More than likely, they were false Christians. They weren't true uh, believers. Uh, they were, right. they were well, barren. Was, they were uh, barren. They, they didn't produce. That's right. They didn't produce. And, and how, did we, how did we differentiate? What was the enlightening from? I don't know, but I got confused last week. Okay. It's a hard one. It really was, because we really were going deeper. And okay. Deeper. So, so I'm going to explain this. They were this. re-crucifying yeah. the Son of God. Right, so let me explain. And then I don't know where that ended up. Re-crucifying meant that Jesus would have to die over and over right. for okay. uh, somebody's sin, right? Yeah. So it goes back to, I'm going to go back to verse 4. For it is impossible to bring to a practice those who were once enlightened. Those who have experienced the good things of having and shared in the Holy Spirit. Now, you can come to church all day long. You can sit in a pew or in a seat. You can become enlightened by the teachings of God. You can experience what it's like to be around God's people. You can see the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't mean that you have to partake in it. Okay? And so, what he's talking about, I believe, is people that have been around this stuff that reject it. Because you're never going to get them to repentance. Right? Because they think they know. My daddy was a preacher. You're not going to tell me anything, right? And the reason that we believe that is because of what it says about the example afterward versus um, when the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears a good crop from the farmer and has God's blessing. Remember, a field bears thorns and thistles that is useless. The farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. The farm did never grow anything. Right? So if it didn't grow anything, get rid of it. It wasn't real. <laughs> but can these people be saved and no. go to no. heaven? No. Okay, no. that is that's that's where I lost. That's why okay. I brought okay. it up. That's why I got so deep about it because people read that and they believe that it's talking about the fact that you can lose your salvation. And he's trying to tell them you should have been telling them. You've saying been saying this stuff and saying this stuff. And if they're not taking it, you've got to go on because we've got to show you what's going to come. What is to come. Right. And the example is, look, this field is producing fruit. Okay. This field is okay. not. Right. Okay. So I, I if this field is not producing fruit, it's not of God. Right. <clears throat> okay. And then we talked about how people might read that and become scared. Right. And say, well, am I really saved? Yes, if, there's, if you're here on a, a Thursday night studying the Bible, you don't have anything to worry about, right? If you're telling people about Jesus. But, but he, he's talking about false security. Right. Okay, people that have been around it. And, and I'm going to tell you, the hardest people 
to draw to repentance are those who think they know the church. Yep. So they go through the motions, but they really don't believe it. It's not just right. going through the motions. They may say, well, I've been confirmed, so I'm good. Yeah. They may say, you know, I did that when I was a kid. I made my first communion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they went through some type of a religious ritual. Yes. So they think they understand Christianity. Mm. Okay? And you're trusting in something that's not true. Not now, I do believe that if the individual is truly seeking, they will become knowledgeable of who Jesus is. And you know how I know that? Say, I, I was just gonna say, I used to say the same thing. I mean, I grew up Catholic, got baptized when I was a kid, did CCD, yep. got, yeah. got, yeah. got, yeah. got uh, what is it, confirmation <laughs> in your first yep. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I learned how to smoke cigarettes and at CCD. In the bathroom. <laughs> With the priest. No, no, no. <laughs> now listen. Now listen. I want to be clear. I'm not bashing the Catholic faith. Okay? I want to be clear. There are, there are Christians in the Catholic faith. But it's easy to be around that and not be saved. It's easy to not understand the salvation that you need as a result, there's a big difference between Jesus and religion. Yes. Okay? Because that's what I'm talking about. It's talking about religion and people trust in religion. Mm -hmm. Well, I once was baptized, so I'm saved. Well, if you're not saved before you get baptized, you're not going to be saved after baptism. No. You're just going to be wet. <laughs> right? So I want to be clear about that. But that's, that's why I went over this, because it's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So then we went through that, and then we started talking about Jesus as a high priest, mm -hmm. right? right? And we're talking about God's promise to Abraham mm -hmm. in our last chapter. And, and that's when he's, he's again foreshadowing, talking about Melchizedek. And it says in verse 13, since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name, right? Mm -hmm. I'll certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. That Abraham waited patiently. No, he didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, but he did. I'm kidding. He did. Uh, and then Sarah did. God had promised. <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> and then in verse 20, I want to I want to read verse 20 before we start. Actually, I read verse 19 and 20. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor. What's what is the hope in Jesus? Right. Yep. It's impossible for God to lie. He right. put. He put Jesus on here to die for us. That's our anchor for our souls. It leads us to the, the curtain in the God's inner sanctuary. We talked about what that meant last week. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He's become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. All right. So that's where we left off. Mm -hmm. Somebody read verse 1, chapter 7. This Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem and was also a priest of God Most High. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. All right. So here's the thing. Abraham was the top dog, right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? We know the lineage. Abraham was the top dog, right? Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem. Where's Salem? Don't say Massachusetts. I, I <laughs> Anybody know? It's a hard one. Macedonia. No. <laughs> <laughs> he is stuck on that city. <laughs> huh? Abraham was from Ur. Okay. Okay, but so if he went for good one, so if he went to Jerusalem and Melchizedek was there. Where's Salem? In Jerusalem. Jerusalem. You better believe it. It is believed that Jerusalem is Salem. Okay? So here's what I want to show you. Abraham got there. This dude was there. All right? We talked about a Christophany. We talked about Jesus showing up in other forms. <coughs> so he shows up there, and this dude's there before the nation of Israel was established. Right? He's already there. Does that make sense? Yep. It's like when when 
uh, Columbus got here and he discovered America. He didn't discover nothing. The Native Americans were already there. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> so, Melchizedek was the king of the city of Jerusalem. He was also a priest of the Most High God. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the king, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Now, this is where it gets good. Alright? Um, well, real quick. Um, Psalm 76.2 refers to Salem and implies that it is synonymous with Jerusalem, just so you guys know that. And in Genesis 14.17, the King's Valley further confirms this identity. Okay? So that's how we know that it's the same place. Just want you to know. So we talked about Abraham tithing. Listen to this, verse 2. That Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in battle and gave it to Melchizedek. The name Melchizedek means king of justice and king of Salem means king of peace. And he will be called king of kings and lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Now listen. Abraham tied to this man. Why would he tie to him? Because he was the high priest. Because he was the high priest. Right? Not only that, he was righteous, right? Which we've already talked about. Righteousness, peace. There is no record of his mother or father or any other ancestors. No beginning and no end to his life. Interesting! It's almost like he's God. Right? He remains a priest how long? Forever. 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 Resembling the Son of God. How about that, y'all? That's why I was confident in teaching the stuff I was teaching you. It says it right here. Could they be twins? No. no. It's a different. It's a different appearance. The They're the Spirit. same. Yeah, Holy Spirit came and got him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so when you read Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the furnace, there was a man that looked like the. Son of God. Oh my God. Okay? So he's described the same way. Interesting. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. Consider then how great this Melchizedek was. Even Abraham, the great patriarch of Israel, recognized <laughs> this by giving him a tenth of what he had taken in battle. The only person you're going to talk to is God, bro. Right? Mm -hmm. And if he tied to him, this must be a very important figure. Now, we're going to get into some deep stuff mm -hmm. about Israel. Okay? What did you say, Roberta? Listen to this. Now, the law of Moses will require that priests who are descendants of Levi, who? Levi. Who, Levi. Levi. Who said that? That's what I said. <coughs> who, who said that had to be that way? Moses. Moses. Okay. Who do you hear it from? God. 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 Right. But this was after Melchizedek. That's when the 12 tribes were set up. Yep. After. They weren't even born yet. This is Abraham. Right. Right. Okay. We're so far behind before that that it's ridiculous. Okay. The law of Moses required that the priests who are descendants of Levi must collect a tithe of the rest of the people of Israel who are also descendants of Abraham. Interesting. This is how Paul is explaining this. But Melchizedek was not a descendant of Levi. Collected a tenth from Abraham. He's making them think. Can you imagine them reading this? Uh, can you back up, please? Can you read that again? Because this is nothing that they've heard before. These are Israelites. They know everything about Levi. They know about the uh, Abraham the rights. They know about the lineage, right? They don't know anything about this. And he was here. He didn't have a father or mother, right? He was here when Abraham got there. But it's in Genesis. Yes. So that's so part of the that's part of the their Bible, their Torah. But they didn't recognize it, okay? 
Just like at the beginning when, when uh, God says, let us make man in our image. Nobody discovered that until somebody pointed that out to you, right? Nobody in here just found that on their own. And yet we read Genesis a lot, right? Listen to this. And Melchizedek placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promises of God. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. What does that mean? Say that again. You can't, you can't bless me if I'm higher than you. That's right. So, therefore, if you're blessing me, you have to be higher than me. Okay, so if he's higher than Abraham, what does that mean to the Jewish people? He's God. That they're lost. That their faith in their religious system is a bunch of garbage at this point. Because everything they've been taught hinges on Abraham. And if there's someone above him, then... Oh my that. goodness, there's somebody above Abraham? And we don't know his name? Do you see how this was mind-blowing to them? Okay? I bet you half of them ripped their shirts, right? <laughs> the gnashing of teeth. <laughs> Explain. Somebody Ever. read verse 8. <laughs> Priests who collect tithes are men who die. So the chisel deck is greater than they are because we are told that he lives on. How do we know that he's God? Because he lives forever. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I was trying to explain this when we went over it in chapter 4. But it's very difficult without reading these words. Because this punches at home, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. In addition, we might even say that these Levites, the one who collected the tithe, paid a tithe to Melchizedek when their ancestor Abraham paid the tithe to him. This means, oh man, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> this means that the Israelites were under the lineage of Melchizedek and they didn't even know it. Right. That's what he's saying. The Levites who were collecting the tithes were actually paying it to Melchizedek because they came from Abraham. And Abraham was the one who paid it. Are you with me? Yep. Listen to this. For although Levi wasn't born yet, and that's where the Levites come from, uh-huh, very interesting how that works, the seed from which he came from was Abraham's body mm -hmm. when Melchizedek collected the tithe from him. So if the priesthood of Levi, on which the law was based, could have achieved the perfection God intended, intended, why did God need to establish a different priesthood? With a priest in the order of Melchizedek and order of, order of Levi and Aaron. So that's a rhetorical question, because it's a letter, yeah. right? But can you see the room when he's reading this letter? <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah, They're just I'm like, like that right now. <laughs> so you mean that everything that we've believed up to this point mm. about how we need to sacrifice and how we need we can only walk this many steps on the Sabbath and <clears throat> we have to do this and we gotta go to Jerusalem and we gotta the festival of tents and every tabernacles and everything that we've been taught our whole lives and the kosher eating and everything that we've lived and breathed is it what we thought it was? That's why no. they didn't recognize Jesus when he came as... That's right. Crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because, listen to this, he just said that if their sacrificial system was good enough, then he wouldn't have needed Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. which was 
a picture of Jesus. Christophany. Okay. And All right, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, wrong. Wrong. Is Melchizedek is God? Yes. Yeah. Mine's blown. I can see it. <laughs> I'm just thinking, totally. what the heck? Um, I told you I have a theory, okay? I have a theory, and I can't prove this through Scripture. But you read what I just read. I just read it. It's in your Bible, yeah. okay? My theory is that we've only been given glimpses of the different forms of God, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I believe the three that we're given, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are enough to keep us busy for the rest of our lives. We don't need any more, okay? But I believe God can show up in different ways. We know that if we saw God face to face, we'd die. Mm -hmm. right. So Moses saw just a glimpse of God, mm -hmm. right? Listen to that. Jacob wrestled with God. How could he have wrestled with God if he was in his real form? The fourth um, person in the fire. No kissing that. Folks, there's got to be more, mm -hmm. okay? But does that mean we got to change the whole way we live? No. This doesn't change anything. All it does is show us that the order of Melchizedek is perfect. And that's why Jesus is a priest under the order of Melchizedek. That's kind because of otherwise we wouldn't have understood what it means. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, you got to just repeat that. everything you it's just cool. said. The whole <laughs> Again, oh I'm reading it right out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. This isn't anything I'm making up. All right, but we just what we do is when we see something in our Bible that doesn't make sense, we just keep reading. We act like we didn't see it. <laughs> That's what we do. That's why we come here. All right, it's exactly right. Mm -hmm. But it's funny. I'll, I'll go to. <laughs> You guys ever read commentaries? You know what a commentary is? A Bible commentary is when somebody takes the Bible and they break it down verse by verse like we do here. Mm -hmm. okay? But what I've noticed about commentary is if I have a strug struggle with a verse, I'll go to the commentary and they didn't explain it either. <laughs> okay? The guys that are supposed to be the, the Bible teachers, what? you know, Guys like R.C. Sproul and, and um, is it R.L. or R.C.? Anyway, um, guys like, um, oh, man. God, it doesn't matter. Guys that have taught scripture their whole life. I go to read what they say, and it's not in there either. John MacArthur. You know, and they skip over those two. So, <laughs> so I don't feel bad. Um, so let's keep going. Uh, somebody read verse 12. When there is a change of priesthood, there is necessarily a change of law as well. And that's what he's saying. Look, our priesthood changed. Where did it change from? From Melchizedek. Not from. To. to. No, yeah. Where did it change from? It changed from the laws of Moses to the, basically the laws of Moses. The Levitical... The Levitical priest, priesthood, priesthood. Right? The Levitical priesthood under Moses. Right? Missy, you lost? No. I'm still back on this. <laughs> this says this that he was the seed from Abraham. That's right. Not Melchizedek. No Levi. Levi was the seed of Abraham. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But then Melchizedek, when they're Ancestors? No. Well, yes, but beforehand. He came before Abraham. Okay. <clears throat> That's why this is so crazy. Because up until now, they've only learned about Abraham. Right? right. They've heard the name of his death, but just like us, they just went, I don't know who that is. I ain't talking about it. I ain't gonna ask the question. Right? So when it's right. So if he was in the beginning, he was here in the beginning. That's right. So this guy was here in the beginning, and he's lived on. He was a king forever. Who's that sound like? It's Jesus. And God. God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So that's why his name is Melchizedek. And so what he's <laughs> doing right here, this is Paul, and he's saying he's explaining why they're changing faith outside of the law under the old Jewish system 
is no longer justified. Mm -hmm. He's completely unraveling their faith. Okay? That's what he's doing. And that's why he said, the priesthood changed, the law has changed. Okay? Because Jesus fulfilled the law. We couldn't. All right? That was why the law was given to us. Okay? So, here's the story. God creates Adam. Adam's alone. He says, I need somebody to nag me. God takes a, a nope. rib out of his... <laughs> oh, come on. That was funny. <laughs> so he creates Eve, right? They sin. Right? Death enters the world. They multiply, right? Mm -hmm. So people are sinning. People are sinning. People are sinning. They get worse and worse. And God says, I'm destroying them all. Except Noah and his clan. Get in the boat, right? <laughs> Take some animals. Up on the hill. Don't barbecue, no. right? <laughs> then I'll come get you. So then he lands, they start all over again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Jewish people are multiplying, they're multiplying. They go into captivity, right? Mm -hmm. In Egypt, they get released, right? God takes them out. And they're like, God, we need people to... to so we need we need a way of living. We need people to be over us. We need kings. That's where first and second kings come from. Well, that didn't work. God, we need prophets. Right? If, if you give us prophets, we'll follow them. No, we won't. We'll kill them. Yep. <laughs> right? So then they said, okay, God, give us the law. Just give us a list. This sounds like us, doesn't it? Yeah. Give us a list of stuff we're not supposed to do. We won't break any of it. We'll break all of it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what happened, folks. It was the same plan all along. It was the same plan. Jesus was going to have to be the sacrifice anyway. But that's how it happened. Okay? It's not separate stories. It's the same story. All right? So when we talked about Melchizedek the other, the other day, we talked about he was there before Abra... Abraham was Abraham. So before, he was Abraham. so he was there as the high priest. Yes, but we don't know anything about that. We know that he didn't have a mother and father. We know he lives forever, right? So we leave it at that <laughs> because I don't know what his kingdom looked like. I can't even speculate. Mm -hmm. I know that Samuel was Jerusalem and he was there and that's where they all came from, right? So, it does us no good to try to solve that mystery because that's all the information we have. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's like when somebody said, uh, well, what, when did God create it? At his perfect time, right? Well, who created God? Nobody. He always existed. And we're always sitting there just like... <laughs> mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you just... What Based came off first? Of what's in scripture, right. it has to be true. Right? Um, now, here's some cool stuff. Somebody read verse 13. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. What? For the priests we're talking about belongs to a different tribe whose members have never served at the altar as priests, right? Okay, he's talking about Melchizedek. Definitely not talking about any other tribe of Israel, right? right? Somebody read verse 14. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. Okay, ready for this? Mm -hmm. What do we call Jesus? The Son of The Lion of Judah. He came from the tribe of Judah. Right? Do you know that? Yes. Yeah. That's where King David came from. Who was Judah? Who was Judah? Judah. 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 <laughs> Crickets. No? Uh -huh. He was one of Israel's sons. Mm -hmm. Who was Israel? Abraham. 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 No. Moses. Jacob. Oh. Jacob was renamed Israel. Oh, Abraham was renamed right. Abraham. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Israel <clears throat> had a son 
named Judah. Judah was one of the guys who threw um, Joseph. Joseph into the pit. Okay? Guess who he was? He was the oldest and strongest brother. He was the one they thought was going to be in charge. All right? So let's keep... You guys got a blown mind yet? Didn't yeah. Know this was a yeah. Decision. All right? What it means is our Lord came from the tribe of Judah, and Moses never mentioned priests coming from that tribe. <laughs> the tribe of Judah settled in the region south of Jerusalem, just so you guys know. Uh, and became the most powerful and the most important tribe. How do we know? Because that's where David and Solomon came from. You guys remember when the, the cities were split and the kingdom was split? What was one called? Judah and Israel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys remember that or no? All right. It was prophesied that the Messiah would come from among its members. So Jesus is of the lineage of David, right? We know that. Listen to this. You know, we read the Bible story over and over. Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem because they were of the tribe of Judah. Judah. And they were descendants of David, mm -hmm. right? We've heard it over and over. Now you just start to put all the pieces together. Now here's what's really cool. All right. If you do the lineage of Joseph, Mary's husband, mm -hmm. not at the time he'll say it, right? Guess where he came from? Judah. Judah. Judah, right. The tribe of uh, David. Judah, mm -hmm. David's family. If you do the lineage of Mary, guess where Mary came from? Judah. You better believe it. So that there was never any question about whose lineage Jesus came from. Mm -hmm. All right? Oh, well, it's the father. Well, guess what? The father's from there, too. Mm -hmm. Not what you got. Right? All right. This change, verse 15, has been made very clear since a different priest, who is like Melchizedek, has appeared. Who are they talking about now? Jesus. 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 De Cristo. Right? Jesus became a priest not by meeting the physical requirements of belonging to the tribe of Levi, why would he compare it to the tribe of Levi? That's where the priests come from. Good from. job. But by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. So if his life cannot be destroyed, and he's of the order of Melchizedek, and Melchizedek lives forever, that's they're from the same priesthood. Oh my God. It and the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, which was in Psalms. Yes, the old requirement about the priesthood was set aside because it was weak and useless. Oh. That was like a punch to their mouth. Mm. Your priests are weak, bro. All right. Somebody read 19. Anybody confused yeah. before we keep going? No, because they say it right there that he came from an endless life. It wasn't from carnal. It, you know, carnal. You know, it was God. beyond. It, that, that, that's it. That tells you that right there. Awesome. So when it says, it is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, that's, that's Jesus? That's Jesus. Okay. Yeah, okay. because it says who was made, but af not Jesus after the law not of by law, carnal but commandment, by of life that can't be destroyed, but after the power God. of an endless life. So his priesthood must be different. There mm. you have it. Yeah. Let ever and ever. All right, I get yeah. it. Ever and ever. Matter of fact, my my uh, I was struggling a few minutes ago because I was reading ahead a little bit. Yeah. And my verse eighteen says there is on one on the one hand the abrogation of an earlier commandment because it was weak and ineffectual, and I was like, what does abrogation mean? <laughs> so I think it means it, they removed. So, yes. Okay. And it's it's talking about um, men who could die. Okay? okay. Versus men who did not die. For the law never made anything perfect. Okay. Ready for this one? Yeah. Ready to get your mind blown? Yeah. Yep. All right. So, did the sacrifice of animals absolve people of their sin? No. No? no. no? What did it do? Kill a bunch of animals. It took yeah, the, kill a bunch of animals. It took, it, took the, it took their place. It took their to place. To pay for... 
the sin. Right? But did it absolve them? No. No. Tell me why. Because their blood was, was it the pure blood. Okay. What did it do? So what it was supposed to do was you're supposed to go there and you were actually supposed to sacrifice it yourself so that you could feel the remorse and the hurt that you had done by sinning in the first place. That's exactly right. And it was supposed to make you be remorseful and repentful so that you were able to do it again. But people still did it again so then they had to go to the more animals. Okay. So let me tell you something that you learn if you read the Old Testament. All right. When they killed these animals, they would cut off their skin and they would wear it. What? Yes. And the reason they did that was to demonstrate how their sin was covered mm -hmm. huh. by the death of these animals. It wasn't taken away. It was appeased. Mm. Okay? That's why the word, you guys have heard probably in, in churches, um, pastors teach about propitiation, that word propitiation, which is actually different from the type of sacrifice that was done under the, the uh, Levitical law. That was animals covering sin. Propitiation is the, the actual replacement of you for the sin. Okay? He was the replacement, the penalty. He became the penalty for our sin. Jesus. Okay? So, here's and the Paul thing. tells them that. That's why he writes this letter. Because he says he came and yeah. gave it and it dissolved all that. But that's why he said the law never laws made are... everything perfect. That's why when we read about Jesus saying, I will remove your sin from the east and west. Right? I will... I will make it like white as snow, right? That's why those pictures are so vivid because that's not what the Jewish law did. It was appeasement for mm -hmm. sin. But now we have confidence in a better hope through which we draw near to God. This system was established with a solemn oath. Aaron's descendants became priests without such an oath. They became priests because of their uh, heretical, is it heretical? Uh, based on their line, their lineage, right? Not because of an oath they took. But there was an oath regarding Jesus. God said to him, the Lord has taken an oath and will not make, how it break his vow. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus is the one who guarantees this better covenant with God. And he's explaining here how Jesus is different from sacrifice in the law. There are many priests under the old system. For death prevented them from remaining in office. What does that mean? Well, when they die, they can't serve anymore. That's exactly right. <laughs> right? I can't trust in their priesthood. They're going to die. They're just like me. Right? There's no difference. But because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lives forever. Mm -hmm. So it's established forever. It's never ending. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Forever. I bet they read this letter over and over and over to each other. Did you hear that? Does that make sense to I'm you? I'm going to be reading it over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Because he is holy and blameless. Were any of the other priests blameless? No. Mm -mm. Unstained by sin. Were any of the other priests unstained by sin? No. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins first and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once for all when he offered himself as a sacrifice for the people's sins. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness. That's talking about uh, that verse that you were reading, Linda. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath, and his son has been made the perfect high priest. Amen. 
Consecrated forevermore. Huh? Consecrated forevermore. Thoughts? Questions? Uh. <laughs> A oh, sigh of relief oh over God. here. <laughs> Try teaching. <it. laughs> You're doing a fabulous yeah, job, Frankie. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Folks, I'm going to tell you, 95% of people will never read these verses like we're reading them tonight. So I said I'd never read it before, but I have marks in my book where obviously I have, yeah. but I didn't like, comprehend it. Comprehend it, or we don't recognize the implications of what we're reading. Yeah. Much like when we go through the uh, lineage, the lineage. Now, I love that example <laughs> because we do. And so and so we got so 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 many of them. We don't see any, any reason behind that, but it does have reason. You just have to go through it step by step. There's a lot of them. There are. I do it. I do it because I like the number. Yeah, I was gonna say numbers. <laughs> 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 I like the numbers. There's fourteen and fourteen. And <laughs> I think this is one of the coolest things I've ever learned in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact that it's a Christophany. Yeah. And again, that's my theory. I love those. Yeah. That's my theory. You know, I, I'm sure there are other people with other theories out there. But based on what I read in Scripture, and I've read all the references, and I've studied them, and I've looked it up, and I, that's why I think what I think. But Very cool. It is. If you can come up with a better one, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Anybody want to talk about anything? I just don't like the fact that they're just saying Jesus is like him. Like, but Jesus He's is under God. his priesthood. But Jesus is God. Yep. So is he. So they're both are, but I don't know. <laughs> Nothing above Jesus, right? Right. But that's why I said if he's forward. under his priesthood and he's yeah. under God, they have to be it, it's like you go, you have to look at the, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, and like, you know, the Water. Father, Son, and Holy nice. Ghost. So he's one of those Holy Ghost people. No, because he's the, he's the person, he's the flesh, who was the flesh of the, the Trinity, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he came prior to when he was born of a virgin. Okay, so he's the flesh God. He's fl God in the flesh. Yes. Jesus. Je but not Jesus. Yes, he's Jesus. He is he was there at the beginning as Malachi. No, he I was mean, there I'm at not. the beginning. Uh, remember when God's when he, God said, "Let us who was God talking to?" There was nobody else there. Who was there? God is whoever else. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he, so and he we know said, there are other places in Scripture mm -hmm. which I've mentioned. Yeah. You know, Jacob wrestling with God, mm -hmm. Moses seeing God, um, uh, no, Shadrach, Meshach. That, Shadrach, mm -hmm. Meshach, and Abednego. We know there are other places. So we know there are other pictures of God. We know. So he's one of them. And so, and the, the term for it in Old Testament, whenever there's a, a sighting of God or Jesus in the Old Testament is called the Christophany. By the way, it's also after the New Testament, which I don't believe. <laughs> that term, Christophany. Because there are other people that believe that um, there are Christophanies in the Book of Mormon. Oh. So. oh wow. But it's only God in the flesh. Amen. The sightings of God in the flesh. That's it. Not the other ones aren't called Christophany. Well, like, you see why people don't teach this? Oh, yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's it. The idea behind this, though, is that Jesus was under a perfect priesthood. Okay? And that, person, that perfect priesthood was established before he was born. Abraham. Before Israel. Before okay? Was born. And that's why it's different. That's the most important part so of what we're This is just learning. to go to show the Jewish people. That, 
Mm-hmm. Right. Abraham gives him this tenth of offerings. The blessings. And blessings. Mm-hmm. And it's because he's higher than them. Where'd he go? Don't know. He's gone. <laughs> back to heaven. Yeah. yeah. We'll find out sometime later. I think he's living next door to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for this study. I praise you for opening up your word and teaching us new things. That's what we prayed for before we started. But I pray as we leave that we would take this message with us. Hold it in our heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night. That was good. Thank you. Good night, everybody.